If you just clicked on this video, odds are you know what a digital controller is, uh, and you want to get into playing Melee on a digital controller, but you also recognize that controllers like this can cost a lot of money. I think a box right now is like 200 something bucks. So here's a quick tutorial on how I got started playing on box, but also how the average person can try it out without having to waste a bunch of money. The first thing you're going to need in order to do this is some sort of keyboard that has N key rollover. What that means is it's a keyboard where you can push as many buttons as you want at once, and you don't have to worry about keys canceling each other out because you ran out of the amount of keys you can press. For example, this keyboard I have, I built myself, and if I push down a bunch of keys on my keyboard, the keys don't actually let go of ones as I add more. Some keyboards, as you push them down, as you add like a third or fourth press, the first one you hold on to will undo itself uh, and it'll let go so that you can have other things. But that doesn't really work for melee because a lot of times in melee, using boxes, we need to hold down like four or three buttons at a time. So you need a key with N, key rollover. Generally, something like a GK61 is usually a good route because it's a really cheap entry level keyboard um, that you can get that you know the firmware is going to let you be able to push all those buttons. Okay, I'm going to show you the keyboard that we got. Don't mind my mouse pad looking like this. I swear it looks so much worse in my webcam than it does in real life. Like it's <laughs> the quality of the webcam does not do favors to the mouse pad. So this is the keyboard that I got. Uh, this thing was 20 bucks on Amazon, $20. I think it was like 25. What they do is they just throw in the cheapest possible thing. So it's gonna have really cheap switches. It's gonna have like cheap keycaps, stuff like that. But that doesn't matter because we're just using it to learn the box and to try out something new. So if I open it up, we will get the keyboard itself and a keycap and switch puller. And this is gonna be really crucial. You're gonna need this uh, because we're gonna take this keyboard, which, hey, this actually this looks kind of nice. What the heck? We're gonna take this keyboard as soon as it focuses, and we're gonna take out any extra keys so that we get the layout of a box controller. So here's the keyboard. Here is the layout of a box like this. And the goal is to take off all the extra keys here so that it kind of matches the layout of our box here. We have our thumb on these buttons and our fingers on these rows here with the start button in the middle. All right, I did some lighting changes just to hopefully make it easier to see. But my plan for my box is I'm gonna have my left hand be on the tab two, three, and probably R. And then my thumb will be on C and V or V and B, whatever's more comfortable and I test it out. And then over here, I'm just gonna leave my rows straight. If you have enough space, you can like spread out your buttons, but I'm just gonna keep them in two straight rows to make it simple. And I'll have my thumb down here kind of hovering around the comma button. So I'm gonna take the keycap puller. I actually have a slightly better one that I'm gonna use. And all you do is for any key that you're not gonna use, you just stick it over the key, you spin it a little bit, and then you just give it a pull and you'll actually pull the keycap right off. So do that with any extra keys that you have. Okay. Got all my keys off. I can go ahead and take these keys and just put them away. So we've now got our box here. Here's the one that I've been using um, here. And you'll notice that we kind of have a little bit of mirroring going on. So we got these curved directional buttons. I left escape on just so I can close slippy without having to like go to another keyboard. You know, if I like hit a chic on ranked, I can just slap that button really fast and I'm out. Um, I've got my two modifiers that are here start button, I saved Y. Um, for my two rows, I didn't worry too much about curving it just because I didn't really have the space on the 60% keyboard. I've got a row here and a row here. And then for my attack buttons, uh, I had to get a little creative. Normally they're upright like this, so I've got A and my C stick around it. But on this box, I put A in the middle here, and then I have my C stick around it like this way. So it's a little bit of a slant, but it's okay. I think it'll work out once we get it all set up. Now that that's done, the rest is just done with software.
Okay, in order to configure our key box, we need to actually go to a GitHub and download a little bit of a script. Uh, you can get the link to this in the description, but the great thing about this GitHub is it's actually really good at explaining uh, the whole process. Scroll down to where it says setup. We're gonna be following this series of instructions. So first you gotta download VJoy from here, which I did, and you're gonna to wanna to actually install and run VJoy. So, now that it's set up, you want to open this and type in configure bjoy. Run it, and you want to set the number of buttons to 12. Apply, and then you can just close this. Now the next step is to um, actually extract all of this. I forgot to mention this earlier when I was recording, but to download something from a GitHub, well this one specifically, you just press code, download zip and it'll download up here. It's weird because that actually is kind of hard to find if you don't use GitHub often. So I'll just use 7-zip, extract this to my desktop. And when you've got everything extracted, you actually want to get this little configuration file that says box keyboard under uh, the drop down options of your slippy. And the way you do that is find your slippy folder, go to the GC pad uh, area, I guess, <laughs> and just drag and drop that file in. It's actually in the setup. It shows you where to find it uh, right here. It's just slippy users config profiles GC pad. If you're like me, you don't know where you install anything. You can actually just search it up and find the one that says slippy. Make sure you don't put it in like project plus or uh, Kirby air ride net play. If you're doing that, I guess put it in your slippy GC pad and you can drag that little configuration file um, into here so here's the box keyboard drag it into here boom it is now in my slippy essentially uh, the great thing about this too is now whenever I'm ready to run it I just click on this little box icon it'll say script started uh, and I can start using my thing right away what we need to do though, uh, is we actually need to configure this. So if we have it running, we click on this little arrow and click edit controls. It'll show us all the different possible options that we have. You want to go through and put in the correct buttons for each one. Uh, and if you need help, you can always go back here and check out suggested layouts, figure out what each button does. You can look up a picture of a box. Uh, with the actual keys. Maybe I can put one in the description, but you just go ahead and push what each button does. When you're all done, you just press X, double check that it's still running. Open up your slippy. Press play, and under controllers, you want to drop down, go to standard controller, configure it. And the big thing here is you want to click on keyboard, and you want to press load, and leave it. Do not hit save ever, because save will mess up a lot of things. Once you figure that out, you can just jump into whatever your preferred game is and actually try out your buttons. Once you've checked that all your buttons are working, if it's all good to go, you're good. Wow, I just missed two L cancels, dog. Oh my god. It takes a little while to get used to the actual <laughs> layout of your key box. But once you've checked and you think everything's good, you're pretty much good to play if everything worked out for you and all the uh, buttons are doing what they need to. Um, the next little bit I'll talk about how to fix uh, some other issues that might come up if like, you have a keyboard that needs specific buttons or something like that. Okay, one issue for me that I have right now is my L button is on tab. And tab is also a shortcut in Slippy to speed up the game. So in order to fix this, what I can do is exit out, go to options, hotkey settings, and find the conflicting hotkey. So for example, mine here says disable emulation speed limit, tab, I just press that and put anything. I just put back for now because, you know, I don't use that key anyways. And now, hopefully, 
if I go back in, load up something and press tab, I still get my shield without all of these speeding up. Another issue that comes up a lot is when you're trying to edit your hotkeys here. Um, you may get one that doesn't work. So for example, my seasick down is set to alt, but if I push alt, nothing happens. The way that you fix this is to actually completely exit out of the program, go to the folder where it's installed, and to actually find the script that says hotkeys, edit it. Just with notepad works fine. And find the missing button. So for example, the one that was set to none is uh, 15. We're just going to be say stick down. So I can just type in alt, press save. And now when I launch my box, it's running and it'll say alt. Uh, if you do click on it again, it'll, you'll have to do this whole process over. So just leave it, let it do its thing. Um, and you're fine. Let's quickly test it out, make sure it's working. There we go. Now we're in business. Another quick way you can double check your angles, your modifier buttons, is by going to Fox, starting a Firefox, uh, just like up to the left or right, and holding down one of the modifiers and see what happens. If your mod X is working, you should get this like longer horizontal one. And if your mod Y is working, you should get this like higher one. So it's not completely 45 degrees angles. Um, it's a little bit off. And if that's all good, then you're good to go and your box is working. Bro. They've actually nailed realism. This is the realest chic I've ever played. <laughs> what? Oh my. What? And that's how you set up and get a cheap and effective way to learn the box going. Now, quick disclaimer, if you're using this box and you find that you do like it and you do want to make the investment, I would highly, highly, highly recommend finding a local builder um, who can actually make one for you. I have, oh, let me get it one second. I have this uh, real 20XX made by hacks box that I love, I love this thing. It has so much sentimental value to me. Mine has like the upgraded switches and everything. Uh, but the thing is that it's, not only is it massive, this thing like takes up the entirety of my desk, um, but it took forever to get here. And for me, somebody in Canada, it cost me like a hundred bucks just to ship, right? It was definitely a good investment for me at the time because I couldn't play Melee unless I had something like that. But I wouldn't recommend it to somebody who's like just starting to get into the box scene now. If you are serious and want to get a good controller, I'd recommend finding a local builder. This one here was made by uh, a local builder from my scene named Mocha. And Mocha was able to create this out of like layers of just laser cut wood and one acrylic panel on top. It's got some nice switches. The sounds are better. It's higher quality. It's way, way lighter and smaller. So I can just stick it in a bag and take it with me. Um, and in my opinion, I just, I just like this a lot more. Uh, the box means a lot to me because it has sentimental value and it was well constructed and I didn't have to worry about logistics of like having a bad build or anything like that. Like I knew I was getting something quality, but this was faster, cheaper, and in my opinion, it'll last me a lot longer um, and save me a lot more strife having to go places with my box. So if you're serious and you enjoy using these keyboards, try to make your way over to either a local builder or a used box or something like that uh, if you want to save some money. Yeah, so in conclusion, this is kind of, in my opinion, the best way to actually get into the world of digital controllers. And just try it out and see if you like it. Um, I'm just hoping that I'm making it a little bit more accessible to the average person, that we can have more people playing Melee, but also people can start to realize maybe some of the pros and cons of boxes. Uh, why maybe they're not as good as you think, or maybe why in some ways they do need to be nerfed. Um, because once you got this set up, it's a pretty good way to like actually figure out how a box works and what makes it uh, tick the way it does.